Hey guys, let's do sling loading in the hip. So this is a remake of my original sling loading video, largely because, for whatever reason, YouTube won't let people play it in high definition, which is not ideal for a tutorial video. So let's redo it, and while we're at it, we'll enjoy the new Syria map. So there's not a whole lot for concept discussion in sling loading. Instead, it's going to be more of a focus on DCS-specific mechanics, and then I can walk you through the different options available, some of the limitations, some of the visual and auditory aids that you have, and we'll do some demonstrations of sling loads with both a short and a long line. Um, it's not the most intuitive thing necessarily. If you were left to your own devices to figure out, it would probably take you a while, because for whatever reason, it goes through the radio menu. Yeah. Um, what I can't show you today is sort of the real-world procedures for how to safely get cargo from A to B. I just don't have that information, so I'm leaving that to you as homework to figure out how to do this safely without blowing stuff up. But I will give you a demonstration of how it all works, and hopefully you'll still find that useful. All right, so we've got two kinds of cargo sitting in front of us here. We've got a fuel tank right next to the helicopter, weighs about 8,000 pounds. We've got a net uh, over there on the ground that weighs about 2,000 pounds. If we wanted to select one of these, first of all, it should be worth noting that these have to be placed by the mission editor, and they have to be marked as valid cargo, or can be cargo. The point of that is to say you can't just roll up to one of those blue cars there and just carry it away. It has to be something you've deliberately placed in the mission editor and marked as cargo, or you won't be able to hook up to it. So we do that by opening the radio menu and going into F6 where it says All Cargos. And then we'll get a list of cargo in the immediate area in order of distance from the helicopter. So the fuel tank is the closest, and then this UH-1H cargo, that's the net, is a little bit further away. We'll get the weight. Oh, and this one's actually 52 pounds, 52, 92 pounds. And this one's 2205. So it gives us our actual weights here. If I select the Huey cargo, the net, we get that red smoke from it. And that tells us two things. One of them is that we are too far away to attach. The other one is that this is the cargo we've selected. So if we had five or six nets around, we would know exactly which one we had selected there. So we cancel it by going back into all cargos. And then we have this cancel choosing cargo option. And the smoke goes away. So if we go back in there again, and this time we choose our fuel tank, this time there's no red smoke. And that means that we are close enough that we could hook up and attach our sling line from here, um, but it won't tell us exactly which one. So if we had a second fuel tank, we wouldn't know until we actually tried to hook it up. Before we do that, we've got a couple of things to bind, so let's go look at the controls. So under external cargo, this category, you've got four things you might want to bind. You've got your emergency unhook, you've got your tactical unhook, that's the regular one you'd use if it's not an emergency, you have your external cargo hook, that's to attach in the first place, and then you have your external cargo indicator, which is a, an overlay that we'll show you later, that should help you get yourself lined up in the absence of having a real person to help guide you, because you won't be able to see the cargo yourself, not easily. Uh, further down in the view section, we have this cargo view binding. You'll want to put on something on your stick. This is what lets you look out your blister window down at the cargo hanging below you. I wish that you could just stick your head out with track IR, but it doesn't let you go that far. So you have to use this binding, which I find a little bit jarring and I try to avoid, but you'll want to have it bound because it is useful. All right, so from here, we have our cargo selected. Um, we're not hooked up yet, and we can do that by pressing our tactical hook or our cargo hook button. If we watch carefully underneath the helicopter, the line drops out from the middle, it'll snake its way over automatically and attach to our cargo. And then our co-pilot will say cargo hooked, or you are hooked, rather. And there we go. So now at this point we could just take off and carry it away and take it wherever we want. To unhook, we press our tactical unhook button. We get cargo unhooked. Unhooking the cargo will also deselect it, so if I wanted to rehook, I would also need to reselect it from the radio menu now. Uh, we'll do that in just a minute. We're going to hop into the cockpit first and see how it looks from there. So inside the cockpit, remember that the hip has a crew of three. So myself, the pilot commander, this guy over here is the pilot navigator, and this guy is our flight engineer. Now when I press my cargo hook button, if I go and select my cargo first of all, Left the fuel tank. Poof, he disappears. 
where to go. He's gone through that door right here, and he's in the cargo area in the back. And what he's going to do is look down through the cargo hatch in the floor and try to provide us with some guidance to get ourselves lined up over top of the cargo. So as normal, we can hit two to switch to the pilot navigator, one for the pilot commander, and three for the flight engineer. So the flight engineer is back here, staring down a hole. If I look up, you kind of get a good idea of where I am right now. It'll be nice when the hip has multi-crew and you can put a real person back here to guide you because I find the AI is a little bit difficult to work with, but they try their best, so, you know. Uh, your cargo view button, which I mentioned before. So it slides your blister window open and then you get, you're looking out along the helicopter here. And so this gives you a view underneath where you can probably see your cargo hanging down. I find it a bit jarring because it's this transition like that. And I find it really hard to maintain a hover while I'm looking down without being able to just kind of do this and stick my head out the window. But here's the limits of track IR. No matter how far over I move my head, that's as far as I can go virtually in the game. So that's a bit of a shame I can't just stick my head out there. Okay, so we've moved from the helipad just because, well, it has weird uh, collision interactions and I was popping tires when I was trying to lift off. Uh, with the cargo. So we've moved over to the tarmac where we have a little bit more space to move around and we know that things will be a little more stable that way. Uh, before you get yourself hooked up, you may want to get yourself into a hover, do a hover check, get yourself trimmed uh, as best as you possibly can. Really take your time with this, get it as good as you possibly can because once you're trying to attach and lift off with the cargo, you're going to be trying to pay attention to a lot of things at the same time while trying to hover precisely and you will benefit greatly from having a stable trim before you get started. So mine, as usual, is okay. All right, so let's set down. And we're going to get hooked up to the cargo over there. So I'm going to turn off my controls indicator, go open my radio, F6 for all cargos, and then our fuel tank here. So we hook up and press our cargo hook button and this time I can show you what it looks like actually snaking across the ground which is kind of neat. Let's press cargo hook and there it goes. It'll kind of tumble its way over and we're hooked up. Awesome. Now because we decided to hook up this way just by parking next to it and then hooking up from there, yeah that's the easy way to get hooked up but now the AI who's supposed to help guide us into position he thinks he's done his job. We're hooked up. He thinks we're in position already. So all he's going to tell us as we lift off is take tension, um, which means climb until the line is tight and there's no more slack in it, which you want to do directly over the cargo, but you're not going to have any help from the AI because he thinks you're already there. He doesn't need to do anything else. So let's jump back into the cockpit. We have another option here. So if we open up our cargo overlay, we get a couple of things. We get the position of the cargo here, this red dot, and the position of our cargo hatch here. So we're basically trying to line up the red circle underneath the center crosshair. And then on the right, we also have us as this uh, hollow red circle, and this is our altitude uh, in relation to the length of our sling line. So we want to be somewhere in the middle where we're high enough that we're not going to bump the cargo itself, but also where we still have some slack in the line where we can move around and get into position. So we're going to try to put the solid red circle here and the hollow red circle here. That's kind of the idea of that. This is, I find, really challenging to do. Uh, so let's get ourselves lifted up here. There we go. And you can hear the crew chief is just going to tell us, take tension. And that's all he's going to say now until the line is tight. So we're going to lift ourselves up first of all so that we don't crash into the cargo. Now we have a long line right now, 100 feet, so we don't need to be all the way up to the middle. We just need to be high enough that we're not going to crash into our cargo as we move over. Now we start making our little adjustments.
there. Now, I find it really challenging to do this because I'm trying to hover while also paying attention to that overlay. I'm losing my pointer reference. But if I pause it here, you can see I'm more or less over top of the cargo. I need to come right and forward just a little, um, but not bad. And then once I get there, I can basically go straight up until the line is tight and then lift the cargo. And that's reflected here as well, where we can see the position of the cargo is forward and right from our cargo hatch. Right. So if we unhook, and then we try to make very, very small adjustments. We're going up nice and slow. The slower you can do this, the better. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Take your time. Yeah, even my little tiny adjustments are too much. And you kind of have to be a step ahead of it. If you see it moving, you kind of have to be prepared to balance it out at the right point. So here we go. All right, so you can see there's hardly any tension left in this line. If you look up, we're basically right over top where we want to be. Zoom out a little here. We're in a pretty good spot, all things considered. The closer you are to the center when you lift off, the less this cargo is going to swing. And with a line this long, it's a pendulum. And the longer the line is, the more it's going to swing, the harder it's going to be to get it to settle down. So you really owe it to yourself to take your time and get yourself lined up as best you can. From the flight engineer's view, you can kind of see that, hey, we're you know in pretty good position here. We don't really need to move too much. We could afford to come back just a little bit. But my opinion is that as long as you've got this circle here uh, in contact with the center crosshair, which I'm right at the edge of, you're good enough. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a good goal to shoot for, especially till you're more comfortable with it. Get ourselves back into our cockpit and pause. Now he says the line is tight. So now we just add more collective and some anti-torque pedal. That's what we want to hear. So we're three meters off the ground. The load is hanging steady. And now if we go out to an external camera, that's really what we want to see. We don't want to see it swinging too much. And it will, and you'll feel it. As it swings around, you'll actually feel it pulling your helicopter one way or another. Uh, from up here, we lose our overlay, but we do have our cargo view. The load is side side I find it extremely jarring to switch to that view and back, but you can at least see the load. But I can't fly very well that way. So we'll just bring it over towards our helipad here. Load is hanging steady. That's what we want to hear is load is hanging steady. Now, normally in real life, you'd have somebody on the ground who could guide you in with a radio. You'd also have your, your uh, crew chief there to help you and guide you where you want to go because he can see down below you. You can switch to this in flight. I'm going to pause it here. You can actually switch and hit three and see for yourself where you are. You can see your cargo moving around. Now, I think that active pause causes this to swing a little bit more but you can see your cargo down there moving around. Now with a long line like this, it does swing quite a bit. Oops. So we're gonna try to get ourselves forward just a little bit more, and then try to transition into a hover here. That's good. All right, we can have a look down. And now the challenge is to try to keep yourself in a stable hover and then set down. So you can use your Doppler indicator that'll tell you whether or not you're moving around. Use your vertical velocity. We're just 
just going to pause it here. And our goal is going to be to come down and touch down on that helipad. So we're going to do this nice and slow. We're trying to keep our descent rate to one, maybe two meters per second. Three is getting risky. We're just going to come on down. Now we should have somebody help, helping guide us to say we need to come right or come left. But we can use, if I pause it again, we can use a, this cargo view to look down, which again, I can't fly while I'm in this view very well. And we can switch to our flight engineer's view. But this is where the difficulty in sling loading in real life versus in DCS comes in. In real life, you have more help. You wouldn't need to pause. In DCS, I wouldn't feel bad about pausing. So I can do that. I can come down. All right, we're on the ground. Now I'm going to reduce my collective a bit and add some slack in the line. Come down, and then I'm going to unhook. We get cargo unhooked. Pause it right here. Have a look outside our helicopter. So I managed to put the cargo down on the helipad, not exactly centered, but like you see for yourself what the challenges are with trying to get this thing, trying to get yourself into position when the AI doesn't know where you're trying to go and you don't have anyone on the ground to guide you and trying to switch to other views makes it really hard to hover precisely. So again, don't feel bad about pausing if you need to because you should have more help than you do. All right, so let's do this one more time, this time with a short line, and we'll hook up by hovering over top of the cargo rather than by parking next to it. So we're going to select that uh, Huey cargo over there, the net, with uh, radio menu, F6 for all cargoes, and then we're going to select the 2,000 pound cargo net. So this should be a lot lighter than before, and our line's going to be a lot shorter, so we shouldn't have as much pendulum motion and swinging back and forth. It should be a lot easier to control the load but it'll also be largely invisible to us because the line is so short. So, have to be careful about where we set it. Well, let's get ourselves into the air and we'll do our, do our little hover check before we head over there. Once you're reasonably happy with your hover and you're trimmed into position, time to start moving towards the cargo. So I'm gonna come in from behind it so I'm facing into the wind. So I'm just gonna move myself over to the left a little bit. We're going to bring up our overlay again, turn off that, turn on this. And this is still going to work even though we haven't hooked up yet. But we're going to try to go by the instructions from our co-pilot or our flight engineer until we're hooked up and then we'll have to use the overlay again. So as we get closer and closer, there's still red smoke, but once we get close enough that should just go away on its own. Now we're getting some instructions from the AI saying left 10. So we can listen to him and we can come over left. And we know we need to come forward a bit and probably up a little bit as well. There we go. Forward 30. So we have to come forward now. Not too quickly or we'll overshoot, which is something I do too often. Forward, ten. Forward 10. In position. He says we're in position. And we're automatically hooked. I didn't touch Take a thing. Attention. So if I Take pause attention. it and look outside. I did not manually hook this up, I just flew over top and the AI will hook up for you. Now you can see how much shorter our line is here, like there's hardly any slack at all and we're right over top of it. So this is the shortest line which is about 16 feet. And again he's just going to tell us to take tension now. So we have to use our overlay to make sure we're still in line 
However, it's a whole lot easier at this point to start climbing, so if we unpause. Up we go, and we're not going to be perfect. Line is tight. Up we go again, add a little more collective. Good. So if we look out below, well, we can see it. It's there. And if I go to external, it doesn't swing nearly as much because the line isn't nearly as long. So it'll stop swinging sooner. It'll be a whole lot easier for us to control. We also don't need to be quite so high in the air at this point because our line isn't so long. So let's go put this on the helipad over there like we did before. Come in this way into the wind and avoid the tower and stuff. And we can afford to be a little bit faster this time. Because our line isn't going to be swinging around like crazy. Again, you want to be gentle when you slow down and stop because you will have some pendulum motion there. It's a lot easier to come in from a lower altitude here. You don't have to worry so much about it swinging around. And I can use other visual references without having to look down below me to know that I'm largely where I want to be over top of helipad. Let's come down again, watch your descent rate. Let's uh, have a look, see where we are. into the ground. Three on the ground. Three on the ground. Same thing. And we're going to unhook. There we go. If I come back up. When we don't have a lot of slack, so be careful how much slack you give when you put down. Put myself into pause. And there we go. We dropped our cargo here. So that's a whole lot easier with a short line. It won't swing as much. Um, it'll be easier to stop and arrest. You, you can be lower to the ground and use other visual references when you come in for a landing. So when possible, short lining is probably going to be easier, but not always the best way to go, especially for some of the big heavy cargo. So anyway, I hope that uh, covers everything you wanted to know about sling loading in the hip. If I missed anything or got something wrong or you have some questions, whatever, please let me know down below. And I'll see you guys next time.